Hey everybody, today is Wednesday, December 12th, 2018, and this is the 11th video in the series of videos that I'm doing on the chart reading. And this will be the last video that I do before I start a new series, and that series will be on using everything that we've learned in this chart reading series to start making forecasts and seeing how well they turn out, things of that nature. Uh, let's see, I am using the United States dollar Canadian dollar cross pair on a four hour chart as per always for this series. And I will be, oh, just to let you know, I will probably start the next series on either Friday the 14th or Monday the 17th. I'm not sure. Um, tomorrow I have for a different, I have a different video in mind for tomorrow. But that being said, uh, if you remember in yesterday's video, I talked about this forecasting technique right here and it gave us this point in time as um, a placement for time and price that we could expect and the market has moved down pretty nicely towards it. So that's pretty cool, but I'm going to go ahead and delete that off of here now. And I'm going to explain this last method that we're going to look at. Now, it's actually something that I've shown in a previous video. Uh, it was a video I did, I don't know, four, five, six years ago now in the 60 Second Secret series that I did a long time ago. I deleted all those off of uh, YouTube because they had very, very poor quality sound. So that was before I had, that was several microphones ago, actually. So this is actually going to be a, um, the same method that I showed in one of those videos, but it works pretty well. So I decided to go ahead and use it in the, this series. So the first thing you do is take your trend line tool and find a couple of lows, or you could find highs with this method. doesn't matter. So we have these two lows connected right here. And then you simply find the highest point because we use lows. We find the highest point between these two and then draw a horizontal line. And that would be right here. And where these two lines cross, or in other words, the node created by these two lines, we can expect a pretty decent change in trend. Now, there's one caveat to this, and that is the horizontal line seems to work a lot better when we put it on the highest or lowest, depending upon which we're using, close and not the actual um, very, very high extreme price. So this would be an example of that. If we look at here, we see that we get a minor top essentially right here. But if we move this horizontal line down to the highest close right there, this nodal point takes place at this low right here and that low is quite obviously more significant than that little bitty high. Now, let me give another example. Move this to this low. And these of course are the same lows that I was using in the previous video with a different methodology. And I'll show you if we look right here, it's the highest high we get this point in time right here and if we move it down to the highest close like that we actually come a lot closer to this significant bottom right here and it's really beginning of the bit of a sideways move but still it's a significant bottom relatively speaking so let me go ahead and quickly go through this this is a really 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 simple I can do this one method so there's no reason to draw it out with a whole bunch of examples. Top up here, we actually pinpoint with the highest extreme price, we pinpoint this nice big low here. And if we use the highest close price, we're actually right here, which is times the end of this sideways market and when the market begins to trend down again. And I'll give you just a couple more examples because this is pretty, pretty easy to grasp. There's a couple of lows right there. Highest close right there. Now that actually gives us this nice, beautiful top. And then if we go to the highest 
I don't know, did I just say that was the highest close? That's the highest price it got to. Obviously, this is the highest close. <clears throat> and that brings us to what is essentially a failure. It's really close to this little hiccup here, but it's not. Um, I mean, it's just a, what, one candle retracement right there. So I would consider that a failure. And remember, failures are our friend because we learn from them, number one. And number two, when you're doing a geographic, geographic, when you're doing a geometric method of forecasting like this, failures very frequently tend to happen at the halfway point of the trend. So we can anticipate that the market will move up essentially what it had already moved up and of course it did and then some so anyway <clears throat> yeah, i think you can probably move forward with this and do your own experimenting with it at this point but you see here there's a right here it's showing that we might just have a low if we go down right here this shows this high up here so right here we might be at a low point looks like we got a forecast there so i'll go ahead or a current forecast i should say i'll go ahead and leave this up on the chart close that so that we can look at it in the next video that i do it won't be in this series it will be this is the last one for this particular chart reading series but when we start utilizing everything that we've learned in the chart reading series the first video in that series, we'll go ahead and look at this to see how well this turned out right here. Okay, so I'm racking my brain and I'm pretty sure that that's everything. There's a couple of nuances with this that you can actually realize, um, not necessarily a higher level of um, accuracy, but you can get a couple pieces of information out of this, not just um what i'm showing you here just play around with it if it if you have the inclination to do so so this is henry Steele, and i will talk to you in tomorrow's video